One of the most unique things about photoresist film is the ability to engrave on natural products such as natural stone and wood. Now there are a few different things we're going to do that will help us have that mask adhere to this. Now when you're engraving stone and wood, there are a couple things you want to remember. Number one, we're going to be using a thicker masking than we normally would on a glass and crystal. Obviously, we're going to be engraving into a much more dense and hard surface. So we need a resist that can handle the longer blast times and a little bit more depth. In this case, we're going to be using an SR2000 5 mil resist. Now, when you're engraving stone and wood, you can do SR2000 5 mil, 6 mil, and 9 mil. 9 mil would be for your granite headstones, whereas 6 mil would be for a natural stone like this. But for some of your lighter engraving onto natural stone and wood, a 5 mil will work. Now there is an additional product that we do adhere to this, and that's the adhesive RZ2. Let me show you how to use that product. Whenever you're finished making your mask on SR2000, it really has no adhesive property to it. Simply take the resist off of its cover paper, take a little bit of the RZ2 glue, which is sold in a quart and gallon size, place a little bit onto your paintbrush, or you can put it into a dish, and spread that material around. Now you'll notice the coloration of the material is a white color. That glue will turn from a white to clear and that's how you know it's finished drying. Once it is dry, the back of the mask will become very tacky to the point where it will stick to your fingers. That gives us enough tack to be able to place it onto these natural products and have it stick. Now an SR3000 by itself doesn't have enough stick property to it or self stickiness to it in order to stick to these products. But you can apply RZ2 to the back of that SR3000 if that's the only film you have. There's no problem doing that. One key thing about natural stone and what many people don't realize is that we do need to help it stick to the product. I'm going to take a heat gun like this. You can pick this up at a Home Depot and heat that stone up. Obviously be careful where you do it. You don't want to burn anything around it. And all I'm checking for is to see if the stone is nice and hot. Now, what this is going to do is actually pull the masking into all the porous areas of the stone. If you'll notice on this stone, it has a lot of bumps, a lot of ridges, uneven surfaces. That heat will pull that mask into all of those parts so that we have a nice even placement. Now what I usually do is take the carrier off because of the curves of the stone, place my mask, and press down with my thumb. You can see it pulling in. Perfect. Now you can see the mask is on the stone. It has a really good bond, and with that adhesive, we don't have to worry about going into the sandblaster and using a higher pressure. Normally with stone, we're blasting at about 40 to 50 PSI, whereas with glass and crystal, 30 to 35 PSI. So with that extra adhesive, we don't have to worry about the mask coming up with the strength, the extra strength of that blasting pressure. Now we should always use the thicker tape, the heavy duty tape, when we are dealing with natural stone. So I'm just gonna place a couple pieces around. Perfect. Now we are ready to sandblast. Once we're through blasting, there's a few different products we can use in order to create a coloration inside the etched area. Now with natural stone, almost every time you want to use some kind of color in order to bring out the contrast between the stone and the engraving. Natural stone by itself, when it's engraved, doesn't have a lot of contrast between the engraving and non-engraving, therefore you can't really see it. A product like Stone Tone Monument Paint or Lithochrome, which is sold at Raises.com, 
can easily fill that color, fill that etched area, and bring a nice contrast. Not only that, it's guaranteed outside. So it's the same product that headstone companies would use to have a weatherproof paint that can be left outdoors. So it's perfect and ideal for this situation. Now let's move on to a wood product. A wood product is actually going to be exactly the same as our stone product without the heat application. We're not going to heat up the wood for obvious reasons, but we want to use a nice sticky mask, RZ2 applied, and you do want a thicker mask. The 5 mil and 6 mil are perfect for that application. Once the mask is ready to use, after it's been exposed, washed out, dried, and the adhesive is dried that you applied, you're just going to apply the mask, tape around your edges, and you're good to go. Again, with wood products, we want to add a paint product. The engraving is, does not have a contrast between the engraved and non-engraved areas. So something like a Molotow paint. Belton Molotow is a great paint to use inside of your glass, crystal, your wood, and really anything that you have engraved. We use it exclusively here for any of the coloration we want to do. So that's natural products. A couple different things we did differently. We added adhesive to the back of the mask. We used heavy duty blasting tape with both our natural products here. And we're blasting with a little bit more pressure going a little bit deeper. So we want to use a little bit thicker mask. A five and six mil are ideal for this.